contribute electronically through our cash app, which is dollar sign the way church 6600. Dollar sign the way church 6600. If you've had any trouble with that, please see one of our staff and they're glad to assist you. Please remember your pledges. Amen. For your building fund. Amen. When you have your offering, I should put it gather in your right hand. Let's begin to apply the blessing to it. Dear Lord God, my Heavenly Father, God, we ask you to bless the seed as well as the sower. Cause it to unlock doors that otherwise be shut. God bless it like you blessed the two fish and five loaves of bread. And in my name, that's the name of our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. For the service didn't have the ushers, get a song from the musicians. all over the house as I present on you the servant of God, the man of God, our pastor, Pastor Marcus Scott.
the enemy tried to take you out with, you're going to triumph over it. Hallelujah. And in the place, the same place where the enemy said you were going to die, you're going to flourish. Hallelujah. 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 In fact, I see three major doors coming open in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God said, I'm about to shut down all of those that had so much to say, but they wouldn't reach out and hand to help. He said, I'm getting ready to elevate you. Jesus Christ. 
Christ, for he is the captain of our salvation. The year of our soul coming to He is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And certainly beside him there is no other. We take the opportunity to honor our sister, Pastor Lewis. God is using him. There ain't no way in the world you can go down that low and not come back up with some treasure. They, they dig deep to find treasure. And sometimes you be in a low place. You call it loaded ball, but see, you're not coming out of loaded ball empty handed. You're coming with some treasure, praise the Lord. We thank God for that, praise the Lord. We honor all of our ministers that are here on today. Praise the Lord. All of our mothers and daughters in Zion, can we give God praise? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to all of our visiting friends. Amen. To Apostle here. God bless you, sir. To all of the elders and ministers of the congregation. Praise the Lord. All of you, amen. Every ministry gift that is here, we honor the Lord for you. Praise the Lord. And certainly, last but not least, amen. Our First Lady, Lady Scott. We thank God for her. Amen. Tell you what, praise the Lord, I felt like I fell in love all over again. But the Lord, the Lord, know what you do. Don't get mad at me. See, when you got the right real, you don't need no spare words. Oh, they ain't got corn in there. When you like the right rib, you don't need no spare rib. All right. All right. When you're satisfied, you ain't looking for nothing else. Oh, they done got quiet on me now, Lord. Hallelujah. But I thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord for all of you. Amen. Trust that everyone have had an awesome Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. And that you enjoyed your family. Praise the Lord and good food. Praise the Lord. And able to tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, some people, they're so deep in religion. I mean, you know what? I don't just wait to Thanksgiving to thank you. I thank them all. Okay, thank you. You don't have to announce that. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, praise the Lord. If somebody was giving away a thousand dollars, somebody tried to kill that joy. Don't, don't be so, praise the Lord, uh, uh, contentious. Just be glad that you are alive. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. So, well, what about the Native Americans and the Indians? What, what, about, what, what about them? They're eating turkey today, too. Praise the Lord. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, man, sometimes you ought to put your rifle down and quit shooting sometimes. Enjoy life. If you're always fighting all the time, you'll never enjoy it. Sometimes God will give you peace in the midst of the storm. There's enough days to fight that you can at least put your weapon down one day and enjoy your life. It's not how deep you can sound. It's about how right you are with the Lord. And I found the scripture that said, follow peace. Hebrews 12, 14 said, follow peace with all men. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. Now, now we hark on the holiness part, but you forget that part that says follow peace. Holiness is being peaceful with folk. Holiness is not fighting every way you go. Y'all done got quiet on me. But that's not the word for the day. That's extra. Y'all can tuck that away in your arsenal. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. There is a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you, praise the Lord. I want to go to the book of 2 Kings, the seventh chapter. And I want to read in your hearing verses 3 through 4. 2 Kings, chapter 7, verses 3 through 4. Once you have found it, if you will signify by standing and saying amen, amen, which is the custom in this house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 through 4. And the word of the Lord says, And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. I want to use a man for a subject for just a few moments. I refuse to die sitting here. Say that again. I refuse to die. See, why don't you just look at somebody and just tell neighbor? Oh, neighbor. I refuse to die sitting here. Now, God, our Father, as we stand and declare your word, let us stand and talk as we are speaking from the orders of God. Give us revelation. Give us an anointing that make preaching easy. Make, hallelujah, the word clarity and of understanding. And we'll tell you thank you. We'll give you the name and glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is in Jesus' name we pray that all God's people say amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. I must confess to you all this afternoon that God has been extremely good to me. He's been good to me. I really don't have a reason to complain. As a young boy from the projects of Walnut Terrace, he's brought me from a mighty long ways. Hallelujah. Never grew up with a car in the family, so if we wanted to go somewhere, Pat and Charlie, or the cat bus. Anybody know anything about the cat bus? Amen. Sometimes you can afford a Taxi cab. But that was on the first of the month when Grandma checked coming. Please the Lord. God has been good to me. And yet sometimes when I take the time to reflect and to think on my life, I think about my potential and I consider my reality and I am thoroughly convinced that there is far more ahead of me than behind me in fulfilling the call of God in my life and yet preacher it seems like the sands of time is catching up with me Hallelujah. This year I will celebrate my 40th. Now maybe some of y'all have not been 40. That's okay. It's big to me, okay? They ain't never been 40 before. <laughs> this past year I celebrated 20 years of being married to the same beautiful woman. All right. All right. My oldest child will be 20. Right. Right. Lord, spare our life. <coughs> this ministry, a man will celebrate 20 years of being in existence. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we are approaching quite a few milestones. And I don't know about you, but 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 when I start hitting some of those 
double digit milestones, it gets me to thinking. Y'all quiet. And I'm thinking thoughts like have my accomplishments been in proportion to the time that's been allotted to me? In other words, have you really achieved things with the momentum of time that you have been given? And even if the answer is yes, there's always this nagging thought that, boy, you know you could do a whole lot more with what you got. Anybody ever felt like that? You ever felt like, man, boy, I just feel like I have just wasted time. Hallelujah. You, 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 you hit pockets in your life where there is momentum, but then you seemingly get in a place where you feel like you are stuck. Have you ever been stuck before? Don't lie to me. Have you ever felt like I'm just stuck? One thing I know for certain, you can get stuck here. There are those that are here this afternoon like the lepers in our text today, hallelujah, that have destiny pulling at you and calling your name. But for some reason, you are stuck in a place called here. I don't know about you, but I'm convinced that there is far more ahead of you than that which you have experienced. And I want to tell you today, I refuse to die sitting here. Can I talk for just a few minutes? In our text today, we find four men with a serious condition. Amen. Sitting, praise the Lord, on the outside. A man of the city. Praise the Lord. And this condition is so serious, Elder Lewis. Amen. That it has stigmatized their life forever. Amen. If you are a man in ancient days, a leper, praise the Lord, you are an outcast of society. Praise the Lord. They, you know, you find some generous people that will give you a piece of bread or that will look out for you, kind of throw it to you far off, praise the Lord, because leprosy is considered a contagious disease. And so, praise the Lord, you are considered unclean, you are an outcast, and so you are pulled out of the mainstream of society. And so these men have been stigmatized with a condition, praise the Lord, hallelujah, that is consistent, amen, in front of their face. Y'all ain't hear what I'm telling you. And it's a bad condition. Anytime you see pieces of your body fall off right in front of you, that's a bad condition. And yet the condition, amen, was not their problem. <laughs> Follow me in the Bible, praise the Lord. They, were had, they had a bad condition. They had bad circumstances. Yet the condition that they were suffering was not their problem. Sometimes we blame our conditions and circumstances and uh, our lack of progress, praise the Lord. However, one has nothing to do with the other. Sometimes your condition is just a distraction to keep you from moving forward. They were sitting at the gate, praise the Lord, during a season that Israel was under siege by the Syrian army. Amen. The Syrian army had surrounded Israel, shut it down, praise the Lord, that none could get in and none could go out. And they were slowly, amen, but surely starving Israel. That was the problem. But the problem was not the leprosy. Mm, Y'all quiet. Yeah. And yet, praise the Lord, the situation that they saw, amen, in their life as a negative ended up being the thing that would cause a blessing of opportunity in their life. Follow me. In other words, praise the Lord, the same, amen, condition that caused them to be an outcast is the thing 
amen, put them in the place of opportunity, amen, to get a blessing by God. What does that mean? Praise the Lord. I'm trying to tell some of you that are crying over a situation that you think is a negative thing. I want you to understand that your trouble is really what's going to put you in a position to be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your trouble, your condition is a thing that's going to put you in a place where God is not only going to use you, but he's going to make you a conduit for being a blessing to other people. Can I talk for just a few minutes? In other words, pray the Lord, you saw your situation as an impediment, a weakness, yet God is using the thing that caused you so much pain, the thing that caused you to be an outcast, he used it as an opportunity to bless in your life. Oh yes, oh yes, there are things that stigmatize us that we go through in life that we'd rather not talk about. We tuck it in the closet. We hide it. We pray the Lord. Uh, I don't want everybody to know that that's my business. You see, don't you tell my business. You know, when we were growing up, our parents would look at us and say, whatever happens in this house, stay in this house. Don't you tell my business. Y'all ever been told that? Pray the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you got ready. You almost got ready to tell a secret and that hand hit you in the mouth because, hey amen, you don't tell family business. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's, it's that family business a lot of times. Time that got you shut down and stopped from moving forward. Amen. There are things that are happening in your life that continue to plague you today, praise the Lord. It is the reason why sometimes, praise our God, you feel like you don't measure up to everybody else. Somehow you can't move forward. What has happened is something in the past. Bridge. Bridge. But you hide. Bridge. It is your impediment that is God is going to you. Amen to bless you. Y'all ain't hear me today. They were put out of the city because of their leprosy. And there they sat on the outside. The city is starving. The Syrian camp is behind them. Y'all don't hear me? The gate is in front of them. The Syrian army is behind them. And they are sitting in a place of desperation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you can get in a place where you can sit, amen, in a place of desperation so long that it will make you feel hopeless, praise God. It will make you feel as if that this is it, that I'm going to die in this situation, praise the Lord. And there they are sitting there on the outside, disconnected from their fellow man. Hallelujah, at any moment the enemy, bless our God, could come in and shut them down and take their lives out. And they are sitting there until somebody comes up with a thought. And the, and the thought is, why are we going to sit here and die? Y'all don't like my talk. Why am I going to sit here and die? Praise the Lord. In other words, I know a man I'm going to die. But at least I don't have to die sitting here. Praise the Lord. I get to choose where I'm going to die. Yeah. Choose, amen, how my story is going to end. Why am I, amen, relegated to sit here? And then the question becomes, uh, amen, what is here? Praise the Lord. Here is the place, amen, where folk have defined you, amen, and have put you there and said that this is the bounds of your habitation. This is all you are, and this is all you ever going to be. Your mama will pull you down. Hallelujah in your soul 
like that's just the way it's going in. And you start playing out people's narrative in your mind. And so, praise the Lord, you have allowed, amen, their opinions to become your ceiling. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. You allowing their opinions, amen, to become your ceiling. In other words, I'm not going to go that much further because they said I can't go that far. I'm not going to move because they said I'm not going to be able to do this. And nobody in my family has ever done this before. And, 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 and why do you feel this way? Uh, uh, Pastor, why, why, why in the world, hallelujah, did you move into a larger building? Why, 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 why what, what makes you think that you can do better, hallelujah, on Wendell Boulevard, hallelujah, than you did on Buffalo Road, hallelujah? Well, praise the Lord, a question came up in my mind. Why in the world am I going to sit here and die just to please people? Do you not know that folk will be satisfied if you live and die and never make your mark on life and never make your Marco Society, as long as you stay nice and neat packaged the way that they called you, but any time you begin to color on the outside of the line, they get kind of mad because they can't control you. As long as they can control you, you're a good boy, you're a good girl, and everything is good, but when they find out they can't control you no more, oh, you're a rebel now. Y'all done got quiet on me. Yeah. Hallelujah. As long as I can control you. Hallelujah. As long as I can put my thumb on you. As long as I pray the Lord. Hallelujah. As I can continue to speak in your ear and manipulate your mindset. Hallelujah. Then, then, then you in the crowd. Hallelujah. But the moment you begin to think for yourself and begin to understand that the Lord is on my side. I'm not going to fear what man can do unto me. You become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Y'all don't like my talk up in here. I learned, hallelujah, that if God is going to use you, many times that means you're going to be on the outside. And you've got to learn to be all right with being on the outside. You've got to learn to be all right with being misunderstood. Some of you will never move forward because you like the in crowd. You like folk around you all the time. You like folk in your face all the time. Hallelujah. Really? It's not that you're so much a people person. You just don't like who you are. You believe what somebody told you about yourself. And so you don't like spending time alone with yourself. So you told yourself a lie that I'm incomplete until I find me a husband. Or a preacher better than you saying amen. 
Why am I going to sit here in this relationship that is not doing me any good? Why am I going to continue to stay at this job because I'm scared to start over somewhere else? Why am I going to continue to live in this neighborhood where God has called me to live better than I ever lived before? Why am I going to stay in a ministry that is obviously dead and the glory of God has a part just because my granddaddy laid the cornerstone and because my mama bought the food in the check. Why am I going to stay there to please Sitting in a spot, they ain't even got no word. 
Hallelujah, drying out. Hallelujah, by the roots. Anybody hanging by your toenail? All because you want to fit in. You want to go along to get along. But every time you do that, you go home and you can't sleep at night because, amen, God, begin to whoop you. Because he said, you know I've called you for greater than this. I know I've called you, amen, to go higher than this. Hallelujah. Sometimes when God begins to move you, amen, into a higher place, everybody won't understand and everybody won't be able to go with you. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. But you've got to be willing to let folks stay where they are so that you can go up a little bit higher. Tax them out and say go up a little bit higher. you got to go up a little bit higher. I feel like preaching now. I'm reminded 
end of the drive that you got to take every Sunday just to get to the word of the Lord. There are some of you that drive an hour and a half away. Hallelujah. And while we're still roasting in the bed, you're up getting dressed so that you can make it to the house of prayer all time. Why is it? Why is it that I'm going so far when I got churches in my neighborhood?
But God says, I'm never going to give the enemy an occasion, hallelujah, to blaspheme my name through you. He said, as long as what you want is for my glory, he said, I'll give it to you. Oh, glory. See, that's why I made the devil mad, because I'm real. I'm not playing no games out there. I ain't trying to be big for nobody. Yeah. Don't care what you think about. I know who I am, and I know whose I am. Yeah. Oh, I know I got a word in my mouth. Yeah. 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 I ain't trying to be free. I am free. Obey the word of God. Yeah. He'll break up your follow ground. Yeah. If you obey the word of God, he'll take you out of your dysfunctional situation. Y'all don't like my talk. Aren't you tired of going around in the same circle? Aren't you tired of sitting in a dead place? You ought to break out the day.
be great, if you want to be great, if you want to be great, find a place to serve. If you want to be great, find a place to serve. And when you find a place to serve, don't try to get in front of nobody so that you can be seen. When you try to find, when you find a place to serve, what you do is get behind the folk and do what you got to do when nobody see. If you're going to sweep the flow, do it when nobody can see. If you're doing all kind of things, you're doing it outside of the eyes of the crowd. Y'all don't like my talking. The thing that God intended you, he always hides before he unveils you. If you don't believe me, ask Dave. David spent years on the back
You know God didn't call you. You know that wasn't the Lord. That wasn't the Lord. You ain't doing nothing. If you know that God has anointed somebody and you see the power of God on their life, even if you don't like what they're saying or what they're doing, shut your mouth. Some of you are in a situation longer than you need to be in because you talk too much. You tear down folk with your mouth that you should be learning from. Say so. Say so. I like Lady Scott. She just thinks she's so much. Because she got 11 children. She handled her 11. You can't deal with your little one. You need to shut up and learn. I'm 62. How that little girl gonna tell me what to do? Listen to me. Maturity is not always about a number of age. Some of you can't. You can't humble yourself because you think you're too old. That's why you're going to hell. I go 
don't do that for sign, no one should. I don't care if you got a word from the Lord. It's look, if you hadn't cleared it through me, you ain't supposed to give it. Because the spirit of the prophet is something to the prophet. The Holy Ghost just had his way. No, flesh had his way. Because it's, if it's of the Lord, it will feel. Listen to me, we ain't gonna be sitting up in the church shouting for 20 years and ain't got nothing to show for. I'm getting ready to put a picture. Amen on the screen. Y'all come back. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen, bless our God, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna build as a people. And how we're gonna impact this greater eastern, amen, North Carolina area. Yeah, we sanctified. Yeah, we got the Holy Ghost. Yes. But we about something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. The power of God set order. Yes, sir. Order is not your enemy. Order is your friend. Yes, it is. Yes. Why sit we here? I'm not going to die sitting in the same place. You got 30 days. 30 days. And a massive shift is about to take place. Ooh. Oh, God. Y'all can see what I said. You got 30 days. 30 days, Joshua Jimmy. 30 days. And you get ready to walk out of the old. Into the new. You got 30 days. 30 days to come out of 2019 and to go into 2020. Are you understand what I'm saying? What am I trying to tell you? Get ready. Don't sit here and die. Listen. Let me say this real quick. They say if we go into the city and they kill us, we're going to die. Then if we go into the camp of the Assyrians, and they kill us, we're going to die. And if we sit here, we ain't going to do nothing but die. So I might as well take a chance doing something different. You've been in the same spot for 50 years. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ain't nothing happen. Go ahead. Why sit there and die? I know that's right, Let's make a move. Let's make a move. You said bust for that bust move. That's right. Let's enlarge out there. Was the message last week? Enlarge your territory. Come on, somebody. Every place that the soul in your foot tree. I give it. If I get what I'm trying to tell y'all, I refuse to go in the same circle of dysfunction. Brother Johnson, I love you, but if you're going to stay dysfunctional, sign on. Because he's calling. Everyone stand on your feet. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not trying to preach you into a frenzy. I'm trying to tell you. The choice is yours. Who in here felt like the message is for you today? That I refuse to die sitting here. How many of you right now know exactly what the Lord is talking about in your life? How many of you have felt like for a season you've been stuck? Don't lie. I've been stuck. I, 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 I love the Lord, but I haven't been able to move freely like I need to. It's not because of the devil. It's not even because of your condition. It's time for you to make a choice. It's your choice. I'm 
telling you and all that I know that if you're going to make a move, this is the season to make a move. If you're going to write that book, write it. If you're going to start that business, do it now. Oh, y'all don't like what I'm doing. If you're going to move forward, what are you waiting on? I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too black, I'm too old. Yeah, you always too something. Make a move. I give you permission by the authority of God to get out of this stuff, please. In fact, I just need you to do something, praise the Lord, just as a sign of belief, as a sign of faith. Wherever you stand in that, I want you to just move and just begin to walk as a sign that I refuse. To be stuck in the moment. Put somewhere in the building that you ain't even been in. Since you've been here this morning, I'm unstuck. I'm unstuck. I'm unstuck. I'm unstuck. I'm unstuck. Yes, it's going to feel, amen, praise the Lord, crazy, but I'm unstuck. Yes, 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 yes. Folks don't talk about you, but you're not going to be stuck anymore. Yes, glory to God. I'm going to feel uncomfortable because I've never been here before, but I refuse to be stuck in the same situation again. Zion is calling to a higher Even water begins to get bacteria in it when it is stale. And when it is stagnant, and you've been still long enough, your foot has become stagnant. But I come to stand up. This is a new season. This is a new day. A fresh anointing is coming my way. It's so season.
that I'm on your side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's the reason why you couldn't lose your mind in the midst of an attack. Hallelujah. Strong attacks against your mind. Strong attacks trying to take you under against your person. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You shall live. You shall live and not die. He said, I'm going to open the door. Yes, I am. I am. I'm going to do it so you'll know that I'm here. I'm going to do it so that you know that the Lord of God is on your life.
Nobody else. I don't want to shut nobody down. I'm speaking to 
you, glory to God. This is your place. This is where your mail gets dropped off. <laughs> and see, the thing is with Tamaria, I, she was already home as far as I was concerned. Hallelujah. The glory of God is already in her life right now. God came in and filled her with the Holy Ghost just so she moved out of the old place. Lord, have mercy. Ain't it good? I said, ain't it good? Ain't it good? You know, because you obey God, you're going to be the link for the rest of your family. You're going to be the link for your generation and the generation that came ahead of you. They still, but you brave. That bravery, God's going to reward you. His hand is all over my life. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Sister so, so tomorrow, we welcome you to the way church. And with everything that we have to offer is at your disposal. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. Welcome home, daughter. We're going to welcome her, Lady Scott, and myself, and our sister pastor and all the leaders. All the church members for you. Thank you.